Hey everyone, Tactics here, bringing you guys another 5 mask guide, this time for the horrific vision of Orgrimmar. With Shadowlands quickly approaching, I just wanted to put this video out there and hopefully help those of you still trying to get the feat of strength before the new expansion arrives. If you want some general tips and tricks for running 5 mask visions, please check out the first couple minutes of my Stormwind guide, which I'll link below, because the tips are exactly the same for both Stormwind and Orgrimmar, and I don't want to get too repetitive. I will also post the weak auras that I'm using in the description in case you guys want to check those out. With that said, let's jump straight into the vision run. Now you'll notice I'm going to run down the right side here. That's because this house right here that I'm passing now can have a shard in it. So you do want to double check and see if it is in there. Again, you can get the uh, handy notes uh, add-on. They have uh, an add-on for visions so you can see all the treasures. This house I'm checking right here that can have Gammon in it, which will give you a HP percent buff. So it's good if you're running things like Twilight Dev, that scale off your max HP. Um, these again are two of these scary adds, just like in Stormwind, the two guarding the final boss room. All you have to worry about in this case are fears, those horrifying shouts, make sure you kick those. Another shard can spawn here right in the back of the bank, and it does. And this time we're going to jump to, this is where the uh, bad potion always spawns on Orgrimmar. So in this case it's blue, so I'll type in blue and you'll see my weak aura change. This will always be the bad potion, and now you know what all the other potions do. Um, this is a good spawn here. This mini boss will always give you a uh, damage buff, uh, and he does heal when he hits you. That's why you'll see him healing. So if you have any big CCs or anything else, uh, use them on him so he doesn't constantly keep healing, but otherwise you just have to out damage it. Uh, just one note, if you are a class that has especially 3 minute cooldowns or 5 minute DPS cooldowns, you will probably want to go around the other side of the vision so that you can pop your cooldowns and bloodlust on Rexar because he is the hardest boss in here. As a prop warrior, I don't really have that uh, that problem. Avatar is up all the time, so it's not a concern for me. But someone like a demon hunter, for example, you would probably want to go to the right side so you can, first, so you can pop meta on Rexar, and then still have meta again for thrall at the end. Moving up to the Valley of Spirits. Not too much going on here. This mini boss right here will uh, charge you um, with wherever you are, and then he will shoot out this decimator projectile. You just want to make sure it doesn't connect with you on its way back to the boss, or you're going to lose a bunch of sanity. Eventually, he will go down, and we can move into the Valley of Spirits. Um, these same Void Walkers from Stormwind, they'll just cast this Void uh, Eruption and it's a stacking damage taken increase, so you want to make sure you interrupt that as much as possible. Oh. Right, there's a chest behind us. There can be a shard up here. And there can be a mini boss, oh, maybe I'll get a look at it, that spawns over here. Be careful as it will uh, hex you a lot, so you want to make sure you either uh, pull it alone or you have some big cooldowns to deal with it if you want to pull it together. I recommend pulling it just on its own because the, uh, the hex with these puddles can be painful. Alright, as you can see there is a shard up on this top floor, so you want to go and grab that. as well as the treasure chest that spawns on the bottom floor. Alright, there's also a chest that can spawn here. Did not this time, obviously, but that is another spawn point for it. Again, just making sure those void elementals get as few casts off as possible. They're one of the few scary mobs in this area. Once
once that's it, that's done we can get rid of all these totems uh, and then we're going to run around and check uh, another spawn point for the crystals and a treasure chest as well they can actually both spawn right in this hut here in this little area both a treasure chest and a shard can spawn did not in this case so we're going to move forward to the boss and he is just going to helplessness you which pacifies you until you touch the orb and that is the spell that thrall gains when you kill this boss he will cast it i think twice maybe only once uh throughout the um the duration of the fight thrall will this mini boss will always cast it twice and the last shard is always is will be here since we didn't get it in the other locations all right Moving on to the first major zone, uh, I believe we do have lead and foot this week, so it's always a bit of a pain for melee classes. Uh, in this case, we have those tentacles that we need to deal with again that will spawn under you, and again, with lead and foot, they're not very nice because if you get hit by those knockups, it's a bunch of stacks of lead and foot it'll give you, and that's awful you just can't move out after it so you gotta be a little bit careful with your movement here and any kind of movement freeing abilities like freedom uh tiger's lust those things are very helpful prout worst case we do have avatar which will uh get rid of the lead and foot stacks um this mini boss will kind of just chuck you randomly uh randomly a little bit and then charge towards you it's uh it can be annoying if it spawns around the same time as your mirror images uh, but luckily it did not this time. All right, that corner of the hut back there can have a uh, shard as can this area. They didn't this time, but they can spawn there. Moving forward, a chest can spawn over here. Uh, the dominators are the same from Stormwind again. They will cast that uh, uh, the five second channeled stun on you, which you want to make sure you kick. There's the other treasure chest. And you'll see there's a shard that'll spawn over in this corner after this mini boss. Um, basically, he's just going to do two abilities one, Sanguine Residue, where it leaves a little puddle, and then that fluid where it'll put a bunch of swirlies on the ground, but it won't stay there. Again, those will just drain sanity if you get hit by any of them. So there was the shard, and there's another shard up here, as you can see. Alright. Moving towards the last boss of this area, he has a few abilities. Uh, he has a frontal cone, the final ground, which will stun. He's then got Unleashed Corruption, which puts puddles on the ground and spawns adds, and then he has the circle of orbs that he surrounds himself with and shoots outward. Again, any of these will just drain your sanity, so dodge as much as possible. He's not too hard. Really, the only last boss that you're worried about for a zone is Rexar. He's, he's pretty scary. Hence why I recommend going to his side first if you have long cooldowns and popping them on him. Alright, moving towards the next side. Alright. For this time it did not happen because we had the other shard spawns, but there can be a shard right there. Let's turn up these ads to grab the chest uh, and a reminder those shield bearers they do have that shockwave frontal cone stun just like prout warriors so you do want to just make sure you're not in front of them when they're casting shockwave this guy has orbs annihilation those purple swirlies they drain a lot of sanity you really want to make sure you're dodging those as best you can and then he just has that knockback beam dark force which is technically dodgeable if you stand inside this mini boss's hitbox. It's just hard with all the uh, the mechanics going on to actually stand there. The flaming feet do not help. Uh, we do have the other buff spawn here. You just click on this to channel it, and you'll get an, a 
ethereal guy that you can kill to get your buff. Um, do not forget to click on Garona like I did. I have to move back and get her. And then moving forward is opening all these houses. The uh, cloth goods shop here does have a mini boss in it. Uh, he's not too scary though. He can also have a treasure chest spawn inside that building, so make sure you check for it. Uh, treasure chest can spawn in the back of this building as well, and we do see the crystal here. So the mini boss. touch the abyss that is the five second channel stun you want to make sure it gets stunned interrupted whatever and there can be a shard in here as well and there is clearing all these places Alright, this boss is actually um, surprisingly easy. You can mitigate all of the mechanics just by standing directly in his hitbox. Um, this is something you mostly ignore as a tank, but Void Torrent is the one you can dodge. You just stand directly in him, you don't lose any sanity, he doesn't hit you, nothing happens. Yeah, Cries of the Void, again, tend to just ignore as a tank. DPS, you might be able to break it, but that's not a terrible amount of sanity you lose. So it's not a big deal to let it go off, it's just that touch of the void you really want to dodge. Just stand in his hitbox, watch your uh, fire feed, try not to get flung across the room around the same time as the cast, and you'll be able to dodge it completely. Uh, Misha will just put a debuff on you, it leaves puddles on the ground, and she'll do that AoE fear. You just want to make sure you're not standing in the puddles when they drop, because they drain a lot of sanity. When she dies, she'll leave some of the uh, explosive beetles, so just kill those, don't be in the swirlies. If they die before they finish their cast, the cast won't continue, so you can just get rid of the cast. Uh, there's the first crystal in this zone. There can be a chest right here, uh, and there can also be a chest, oh, there it is, just across from here. There can also be a crystal down here, in this case there wasn't. These Venom Weavers, they just have the Venom Bolts, and then they have the AoE Concentrated Venom, so save kicks for the Concentrated Venom if you uh, have to. And there can be a Shard in here as well, and there it is. Be careful, these guys can charge, um, but aside from that, they will just do this Toxic Volley here. Make sure you step out of them. Um, you really don't want to get headbutted off the edge of this platform, as you see you're going to lose Sanity if you get headbutted down here this guy and this next guy up here will both do it so just be careful with the headbutts it can get a little scary there's the last chest and the last crystal can spawn back there now again Rexar is definitely the hardest boss in here so uh, definitely recommend using bloodlust definitely recommend saving all your cooldowns for this um, and especially any forms of AoE CC. As a prop warrior, we got Shockwave and we have the AoE Fear. They both work very well. Your main goal here is to limit the number of borers that are able to finish their bolt cast on you because that drains a lot of sanity. So you can do this by CCing them anyways. Obviously your interrupt works. Um, but also you can stagger their spawning based off of Rexar's uh, health. You get a big torrent there, or, or a twilight dev, sorry, and that goes out the window, so you just gotta try and interrupt as many of these void quills. You see the fear, or just runs off to the corner, and try and get as few of these casts on me as possible. Just focus on killing those boars first. They are definitely the number one priority. Aside from that, there's just occasionally, uh, once Rexar gets low enough, these ads that just run across the room, they will drain a bunch of sanity. You see there's 60 sanity per hit, so you definitely want to avoid those as much as possible. But pretty much just focus on those boars and you will be okay. Any kind of CC here works very well. 
but that is the scariest part of this place. Uh, with that done, we will run over to the crystal vendor and redeem our crystals. He is just over here in the corner. And we can head into Thrall. Didn't need to use an orb there. Um, but yes, as you can see from Rexar, he gained the two boars. He gained the defiled ground from uh, the other major zone. Hopelessness, as we saw uh, from uh, the first minor zone that we did in the Valley of Spirits. And Cries of the Void here from the other uh, minor zone in the drag. Aside from that, it's more just a tedious fight. It's not very difficult. It'll take some time, but no need to rush it. And that is five mask run for Vision of Orgrimmar. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube or uh, follow me on Twitter for updates on recent videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.